Good morning, afternoon or evening, wherever you may be in this wonderful world. This morning, I woke up with just one thought on my mind. Boy, do I need a peg. And I thought it'd be fun to go and see if we can find some, because at this time of the year, they are out and about on the forest. See if we can get some piggy pictures, because they're great fun animals. And along the way, that we might just drop by the coast and see what's going on down there, because it's a really beautiful morning. But boy, it's cold. So I am super glad that I installed some heated handlebar grips on this bike a couple of days ago. They are on my usual bike, but my usual bike has got a weird problem. And that's why I've been using this one. You'll meet it soon enough. Let's get going, see what we can find. Oh boy, it is cold. But you know what, it's absolutely gorgeous. English winters are a really good time to go out and look at some of the countryside because the sun is low in the sky. Yeah, okay, we haven't got much in the way of leaves on the trees, but it is a good time to do it. And I have that on really good authority from my buddy Tom Mackey, who is a professional landscape photographer who travels all over the world taking amazing pictures. I'm very, very glad I have got my heated grips going on here. They are awesome. I can feel the warmth coming into my fingers because it's only about three or four degrees C at the moment. And I don't know why I've got a little misfire on my bike. I don't like that. We've arrived in Keyhaven. There's been a little fishing port here for centuries. And I'm hoping there's something pretty to look at down here. I mean, let's face it, most photographers love a boat in the early morning light. Morning. I'm gonna park up here. and We'll go for a little walk along the sea wall. Once upon a time, Many, many years ago, when I used to work in civil engineering, I built a part of this seawall <clears throat> with a Lee Bear track shovel. Yes, it does look really rather lovely, doesn't it? The reason the camera is angled the way it is is because if I turn it the other way, I will go into total silhouette, and we want to see a little bit of what's going on. Now, one of the mistakes that photographers often make when they come to a beautiful, pretty place like this is they try to get too much in. There is this internet myth, this photography myth, that you need to use a wide angle lens if you're gonna photograph a landscape or a scene or something like that. Not necessarily true, let's see. If we look over here, yes, it's all very pretty, but as we kind of just pan around, it's like, where are we looking? What are we looking at? The only place it starts to get interesting, really, is when we include the sun over that way. But it's still too busy, isn't it? What about if we start trying to zoom in a little over this way? It's getting a bit better, isn't it? As we're losing some of the clutter, some of the things that are going on around, but it's still a little bit too busy. The other thing you might notice is that shot's really quite dark, isn't it? Why is that? It's because all this light coming towards the camera is confusing it and it's underexposing. It's seeing all the water reflecting the light and it goes, oh, it's too bright. This is a case where you need to argue with your light meter. Put it up where I want it, it's somewhere around there. And it's a whole lot more healthy. Looking at the histogram, that exposes better. But again, where's our shot? It isn't really here, is it? There's nothing terribly exciting happening like this. It's pretty, but nah. I think if we walk around the corner over there where you can't see at the moment, we're gonna have sort of angled light and I reckon it'd be possible to isolate just one or two boats and it might look a lot nicer. There's a line of boats over there. I don't know if you can see them in the GoPro because it's so wide, but they're just kind of over here. And I think as we walk this way, they may begin to line up a bit. It's not far off about where we are now. See if I can zoom it in for you. If you can't see it, trust me, they are there. I'm gonna try and take a picture. 
It's all to do with composition, where you stand, how you line things up. Composition is an action of arms and legs and hands and feet. It's not a camera function. They're lining up quite nicely at the moment, so let's look at them very quickly. If I zoom in on them, you see, there's our line of boats. The light's quite nice, and I'm hoping they'll all sort of line up all the same way as they were a moment ago when I first got the camera out. The thing that isn't working very well, though, is our composition. It doesn't work very well as a horizontal format. Works much better if we turn the camera the other way up. Look, you see, we can kind of isolate them a little more and get rid of some clutter. If I zoom in very, very slightly, possibly move to my left a bit, that's a lot better. Now, they're all over the place at the moment, so let's hope they all line up properly. And then we can take the shot. What about exposures and things like that, as we said earlier? The thing is, down here right now, it is pretty bright. Now, because we're side lit, it won't be quite so tricky, but there we go. What about where we focus? Well, again, it's quite a long way away, so it doesn't really matter too much in this case. Nonetheless, I'm gonna use single point autofocus and focus on the boats. Now, I think they're gonna swing round into position, so I'm exposing just a little bit over what the light meter says, focus on the boats, and I think that's it there. It doesn't look too bad. It's a lot better than what we saw right at the beginning. I still think there's an isolated boat up here. You know what? There's nothing like as exciting from this angle as I'd hoped it would be. This is another lesson, of course. If you don't go, you don't know. So you have to go and find out. And sometimes you get disappointed. And then what do you do? It's really simple, isn't it? Go somewhere else. Oof, that's a bit powerful, isn't it? All that burnt out stuff, you're not allowed to do that. Yes, you are. You can do anything you like, it's your thing. Now, the pitch around the corner didn't work, so go somewhere else, we've come somewhere else. And I was thinking, what about those people who go, I do want to get a bit of a wide shot of everything. Well, let's make it dramatic, let's make it different. Let's have a look through here. Now, I haven't got a super wide lens, I've only got my 18 to 55 on at the moment. What am I thinking? Well, we've got this really bright light, and I'm amazed that the GoPro can see me at all. We've got this really bright light. We've got a boat sitting in that light path. Well, that's really cool. We've also got a very, very clear blue sky. There's no haze going on. There's no moisture in the atmosphere. What does that mean? It means that we could make a starburst and put that in the sky above the highlight with a boat in the foreground and a bit of silhouette boat action going on out either side. How do we do it? We've got the lens as wide as it will go. A wider lens would work even better. You could possibly rotate it and do it that way up. That could work quite well. Now it's very, very bright, isn't it? As we reduce that exposure, the boat goes more silhouette and we get a bit more action going on in the sky. We've got to find the place where we can get the best of both worlds. This is what we do. This is photographer work. How do we do it? Well. First of all, we know we want a starburst. Starbursts are caused by small apertures. I don't know how, it's something to do with pixel dust and magic fairies and things flying through the air. They wrap themselves around the leaves in the shutter and they give you a lovely starburst. I'm not very techy, am I? So, what are we gonna do? It means that our aperture becomes a primary control. Let's go for a small aperture. I'm gonna go about F16, I think. That should be fine. Why F16? As long as it's a small aperture, don't get too hung up on it will need this aperture or that aperture. The smaller the aperture is, the better the starburst will be. Maybe we could do a couple of examples. So, F16 is set. What's that going to give me? I've got 320 ISO set, and that's giving me a thousandth of a second even in this light. Now, I don't mind if there's a bit of burnout in the sky because starbursts burn out, the sun burns out. Looking at my histogram, bizarrely, I've got detail in shadows and a little bit of a burnout where the sun is. Cameras are incredible now. How they cope with dynamic range like this is, in my opinion, completely astonishing. So there we go. I think it's a much more interesting shot than the all over thing we did when we first arrived. Let's go somewhere else. I thought we'd have a little run through the village on the way out. This is the old post office of Keyhaven. Keyhaven. Apparently it means port where cows are shipped, cattle were brought over and other livestock from the Isle of Wight which lies opposite to here and then they'll be moved up to go and graze on the water meadows of Christchurch, the Gun Inn, 
fine little pub. I bet there were plenty of smugglers in there years ago. So Keyhaven has always been a little harbour here and a lot of the industry around this area was salt. Along that sea wall further along there are old salt pans where they would the sea would come in and then it would be pumped up higher and higher and the sun would evaporate off the water leaving behind salt. It was a big industry around here along with smuggling. So I've just ridden across a few fields into the very nearby little town of Milford-on-Sea where there's a lovely village green, great places to sit and I'm sure I should be able to get a cup of coffee and a croissant. So I'm hoping to grab a bit of breakfast and a lovely cup of coffee. Then I was going to have a little chat about what I've got in my bag because a few of you guys have asked what am I carrying with me? <laughs> look, the great British red telephone box. So oh, look, that's how lovely is this? This is something I love about a bit of village life. Look what's inside it. Where these things are no longer in use because the mobile phone has done away with them, they often get repurposed. Some of them as, you know, those cash dispenser machines. But look at this. There's a book swap going on, the village book swap. So people will bring along a book they've read, one they don't want anymore, and they put it in here and take another one. Isn't that just awesome? I've just been walking up and down the street and everything appeared to be closed up. I didn't know about this one. Could I have a black Americano to take away, please? Yes, certainly. And a plain croissant. Yeah, That'd be great. Oh, I'm really tempted by a mince pie as well. I better have one of those two. One of those two. Thank you. You can only buy them in six, can't you? In yeah, the... that's true. I only want one, otherwise I'll eat six. Yeah. <laughs> they are lovely. Thank you, Thank you One of my favourite things. Yeah, mine too. Nice pie. Lovely, nice ladies. Lovely things to eat. Now, I haven't got to spill this one because we're only going out onto the green. Unfortunately, it doesn't look to me as though there are any tables or chairs out there. But never mind. We'll find a way. So what am I using to shoot on? What am I carrying things around with? This is a... I don't know what makes this is. Oh, here we go. Rio, Rossi, Riossi, road line. It's very, very old. It's just a magnetic tank bag. Magnetic flaps in the side, sit it on the tank, boink. I also run a bungee under the tank just to hold it together. Probably one of the most important bits of kit is one of these power pack chargers. This is a very, very powerful one because I find the GoPros just burn battery, particularly on a cold day. So I have a GoPro charger, one of these couple of cables so that things are being charged on the run whilst riding along. In here is this little bag here. And inside that, I've got Fuji X-T2, which I've been using for many, many years with the GoTo 18 to 55 mil lens. This is what I use most of the time. Um, yeah, it's not the latest camera, it's not the greatest, and the little flippy screen is slightly broken there. It doesn't close properly because I caught it on something. But the thing is, cameras don't take pictures, you take pictures. It's your creativity, it's the way you string all the things we've talked about this morning together. One of the worst things you can do to try and teach yourself photography is just to watch free tips and things on YouTube. And I should know, I've made hundreds of them. So why is that? Well. There's nothing wrong with the free tips and the free videos. There's some great information in them for me and many others. The thing is, how do you know which sequence to watch them in? How do you know where that missing golden link is that connects this thing to that thing? The value of a paid course like my masterclass in photography is, it's all there, laid out in the correct sequence, sequence to make sense. Therefore, everything works effortlessly, easily and smoothly. Such as this morning we talked about the aperture being the primary control when we were doing the shot with the boat out across the water. Why was that? Because there's a little chain of dominoes behind it. Come and try a free sample because if you don't like it, well, don't buy it. But you know, we've got some great reviews for a reason. Click the little thing top right up here. Come and try it out. What else is in this bag? I use the, I'm carrying with me the 55 to 200 zoom because I find it really useful and I've used it a lot more than I thought I would in the making of some of these videos. I would like to be able to carry a wider lens, a 10mm, but I don't really have the space. 
A um, couple of GoPro cameras I'm using Hero 7 Blacks. Obviously one talking to me, one showing you where I'm going. Sound is mostly by a microphone I've got hidden inside the helmet. But also when I'm doing this, walking around stuff, I use one of these bad boys, Rode radio mics. They're very, very good. You can't see the other one because it's on top of your head, on top of the camera. Um, and that's about it, really. Cloth to keep the lens clean. This bag is a problem. I've been looking to see if I could find a proper, you know, camera bag, a magnetic camera bag. So it's kind of like this, but instead of it just being a bag with another bag in it, you know, with all the Velcro bits that you can change and adjust the pockets, because it would certainly make my life easier. If you happen to know of such a thing, please tell me in the comments below. It would be incredibly useful. Right, breakfast time. I'm going to enjoy that. And uh, then we'll hit the road again because it's piggy time. I think the light might be lovely on this, yeah it is, beautiful old church. Look at that, isn't that gorgeous? Reserve parking for residents and church only. Well, I'm going to be an honorary one just for the moment. But doesn't that look rather lovely? Let's just go have a quick walk and I'll just want to explain a little bit about why the light's lovely. It is rather pretty, isn't it? And this angle is the sort of angle that could work very, very well. It's these shadows and the highlights that are going on. Look at that shadow running up and down here. This is what is making it look interesting. If it was a dull day, it wouldn't look half as exciting. Over here, we've got a tree. How about if we try and frame it with a little bit of tree action? Look. Now I'm just doing this through the GoPro mounted on the front of my helmet, look. But you see, we've got a bit of framing going on either side of the shot. That's just a little compositional thing, which just makes things look so much nicer than when you just sort of stand out in the middle and just point at it. Quick compositional tip there, because the light looks so good, I thought it was worth stopping just for a moment. Heard of cows? Of course I've heard of cows. This is Lyndhurst, capital of the New Forest, and in front of us is Queen's House, home of the Verderers' Court. What are Verderers, you might ask? The Verderers were appointed by, I guess, the Crown to manage a minister and take care of the forest in their name, because, you know, the New Forest was basically a huge, great big deer farm and a massive source of revenue. Below the Verderers, were the Adjusters. These were the guys who went out and actually did the work, who looked after the animals, made sure that the commoners were doing what they should. So what are commoners? There are such things as commoners' rights. These are rights granted to commoners, people who live on the forest. It actually goes with property these days. But these are ancient rights to graze animals. So where we see cows and horses and donkeys wandering around, that's um, the right of pasture. We are looking for piggy wigs. That's the right of mast. Right of mast, right of panage, not entirely sure which one's correct. But the pigs are put out onto the forest at this time of year because they eat acorns, they thrive on acorns, they love an acorn. But the acorns are very poisonous to the ponies and other animals. So for, I think it's 60 days, the right of mast is in existence so that the pigs go out, they eat the acorns, and it's all a marvellous system because it just sort of keeps the ecology working. <laughs> I'm sorry, I am a biker. I can't help but have fun when you come to a roundabout. 
And look at the colours! Isn't it gorgeous? I mean, there's no point in having a bike if you can't have fun on it. <laughs> and back into more sensible land. So we're going to come off this bit of main road and plunge back into the quiet tranquility of some proper forest. Oh, that's a shame. Oh, well, that's a shame. Never mind. We might have pigs hidden behind very large trucks. is often a good place to find a pig. Pigs, 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 where are you? Wee, 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 wee. <laughs> of course there isn't one to be seen. <laughs> Let's pop down a couple of these little side roads just in case. There's often a little thicket of pigs lying around in a big sort of tumbly heat, having a doze in the sun, either that or rooting around, having a lovely piggy time looking for acorns. Bad, mate. I'm looking for some pigs. Pigs. Where is there some pigs out doing a bit of masting and panaging? Have they all gone in? Is it? I've missed the boat, bugger, because I came through near Bramshaw fairly recently and there was a whole little thicket of pigs by the side of the road. Apparently the pigs were brought in early this year and the ones I saw last week were probably the last ones and if there are any pigs out at the moment they're breaking the rules because the right of master panage ended a little bit early this year because there aren't so many acorns on the ground so the pigs have all been brought in as of last week and we've missed the boat. Never mind we're going to ride on back towards home and just see if we see anything along the way. The light's changing, we're getting a bit more cloud coming in now, it's not going to be quite as interesting as it has been. But, if you don't go, you don't know. Well I've been searching all over the place to try and find you some piggy action and it just hasn't worked. But I have found a couple of ponies and I don't know if this will work, he's gonna move since I first arrived. Hello mate! If you come into the forest please don't feed them because they then run out onto the roads scrounging for food, they get run over and killed. <clears throat> the other thing that's not a good idea is putting your kids on them. I know they look cute, particularly the little baby ones, but... Right, quickly, because horse is on the move, look. We've got Pony in the Valley, and Pony is slightly backlit. Look at that, you see how this little pony down here really stands out with the light. Now I'm going to try and move. Let's see if we can do this together. I've got the long lens on. Can you see how I want the light really sort of coming from behind and I'm hoping that it looks up again. There we go, that's a slightly better angle because we're facing more into the light. Long lens on to isolate because look, if we zoom this out, that's not too bad with a bit of the mistiness in the background and maybe if I go slightly lower, that's probably quite nice actually. Just a little bit of the forest behind. Now, of course, his nose has gone behind that ridge. Straight away they move. Now, if I shorten the lens a little, will this work? You see, of course, I'm much too close and there's that horrible piece of sky. Quick, head up. Come on, horse. Oh, he looks so dopey. Never work with children or animals, ever. Sometimes they will put their heads up when they hear a stick break. Come on. 
Nope, that worked appallingly. This one in the distance is on the move. That's better. Look at the mistiness in the background. I rather like that. Grazing pony. Now we're starting to get some good stuff. It's quite a nice shot, but I do wish we could have a bit of head up action because I think it would help tremendously. That's quite nice. The angle of the head. And I quite like having the tree in the valley. It's not bad. You've got to move fast. You can't hang around. You can't wait. Backlighting. You may have noticed in quite a few of these videos, I often photograph directly into the light because it's shooting into the light that has put that little halo around the outside of the pony. Helped pony stand out from the background. Light is really important. Sorry I didn't get you any piggy action. It's the way it is. I should have done my research, shouldn't I? But I hope you've enjoyed this little trip out into the forest and watched me completely screw up. Uh, if you did, please like, share and subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to ping the notification bell. Also, please leave your thoughts in the comments below. If there's anything you think could be improved, what you'd like to see, if there's anywhere you'd like me to go and visit. Right now I'm working around my local area, but let's expand this. Let's go further afield. Let's start exploring a bit more of the UK. Be well, look after yourselves, and I'll see you next time. Oh! <laughs> I was just too late. Two heads down. Anyway, never mind.